What's up guys? Welcome back. If you've been a long time subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. If you're new to the channel, what's up? I'm Dustin and today I'm going to show you something that's from the online school. If you're interested in learning to build glass and connecting with the community, I highly recommend the online school. It's at www.revereglass.com. There's courses and individual classes. There's online workshops that are eight hours long. Today, I'm going to share with you uh, an online course. So this is part of a 10 class series that's called Pipe Making One. And it's a self-paced course where you can learn to blow glass right now. There's a seven day free trial. So you guys should definitely check it out. It's free to cancel anytime. And if you want to pause or come back, that's totally okay. Thank you guys so much. Please enjoy this video. It's Pipe Making One Class Stand Up Bubbler. What's up guys, welcome back. This time we're gonna be doing project nine in the Pipe Making One course. Thank you guys so much for checking out the previous courses. There's a lot of fundamental building blocks that we went over in all those videos. And in this video, we're gonna be using all those components and making our next piece, the Stand Up Bubbler. The Stand Up Bubbler is a variant of the bubbler and uh, it has a different kind of seal. So it's like some people might call this a hemlock or even a Sherlock bubbler. There's a lot of different names for this. Uh, so we're gonna start off with a couple of blanks and you know, if you have 32 or 40, you know, I like to use that for the, for the can part, but 25 would certainly work. I believe this is the 32 that I'm using. So I'm heating up the bottom of this and I'm gonna start blowing it out like we did previously. So I'm heating up in the center a little bit to start to expand that center part a little bit and that's gonna increase the structural integrity of this piece in the bubble as I start to blow it. If I start to heat up the end too fast and blow it too wide too fast, it'll start to get floppy. So this gives me a little bit more control. So I'm just blowing into this and uh, going to expand that to the size that I need for the base of the can. <clears throat> All right. There we go. So I'm going to heat this up now on the bottom. Now I'm going to go back in here with my paddle, heat this up again. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I mean, tons. So I'm just going to show you one way. And that's, that's one of the things I like to teach a lot is that there's a lot of paths to a similar end. A lot of people may do these steps in different orders or flatten the bottom at a different time. Uh, as long as what, what you're doing works and it's clean and nice, uh, you can do the steps in really a lot of different orders, whatever you're, you're most comfortable with. So I'm just pushing this on the marver, flattening this all the way. And that's going to give me a nice place to work from to start off, uh, you know, building from the straight flat surface of the bottom of the bubbler. So I'm going to heat this up and remove any of the lines, the excess lines and the, the design that the, that the graphite marver left on there. Heating this up so it's nice and clean. And then I'm going to pop a little hole in the bottom. And that's going to allow me to attach the blow tube and I'll be able to switch the blow tube. You can make the can in many different shapes. This is just a very simple uh, variation of the, the regular bubbler. So it's blowing the same bubble and flattening it. But you could get crazy with the shape. You could do more for sure. So I'm going back in here on the corner. You can flatten this out, blow it out a little bit, anything you want. In my case, I'm going to go onto the marver, holding it down and creating more of a taper shape on this. All right, so I'm just going to take this and heat this up because sometimes when you marver it, especially if you have a sharp corner like that, uh, it could put some stress on the glass. So I really want to make sure to keep that nice and even and keep it warm. 
I'm gonna go in and shape this a little bit more. I'm gonna blow a little bit and kind of push out that edge and make this a little bit more of a triangle shape. Um, but you guys can make you know any shape that you guys like and any variation of this and just have fun with this. Um, I'd recommend trying to do all the practice exercises and then once you do one kind of trying to mimic my shape, then uh, go ahead and try to vary and make it make it your own. <clears throat> all right. So I'm just blowing into this, uh, not trying to even it out because I didn't really uh, think that it, it was going, I thought it was going in too much. So blowing it out expanded the wall just a little bit for me. All right, so I'm just heating this up and I'm gonna flatten this again, trying to get that really nice and even. There we go, pushing that down. Cool. All right, so now I have that pretty good. I'll probably go in an another time, make sure that's nice and even. You can spend as much time as you want as you go through these pieces. It's really about creating the space for you to be creative and having fun with this. You can definitely make money with your passion, but you really wanna focus on the passion part of it and make sure that you're doing it ultimately for fun and for your own enjoyment. And that's what the beautiful thing about glass blind is that it's so fun and easy to enjoy and magical. Um, so yeah, we just have fun with it. So now I'm blowing a hole on the bottom. I'm going to open that up with my seven millimeter punty and then attach a blow tube. So that'll be a 12 millimeter blow tube. And this will help set, set me up for the shape. So I'll open this up with my reamer. There we go. Clear that open and connect it. So once I have that all connected, I'm gonna to start to shape the top of this can. And it's the shape is really similar to the, the other bubblers that we've done, um, the regular bubbler. So we're gonna just blow out the top a little bit and instead of uh, on this one, I make the can a little bit longer. So I'm gonna pull the center point out a little bit more, but it's a really similar shape. You wanna make sure that all your connections are nice and good. And you can detach the blow tube at this point, or you could even heat up the center and stretch that out, depending on what steps you wanted to take. So now I'm going to heat this up and shape out the top part of it. So applying a bunch of heat, make sure that all the glass has really even heat and you can see it kind of melting in and condensing a little bit. Once it condenses, you can blow it out and make that round bottom. And then once you have the round bottom, you have that basic shape in there, then you can go ahead and heat up the rest of it start to blow out that more of that bubble shape that will be on the top of the can is where you, you'll push the bowl eventually good job all right so now what we're going to do is uh, heat up the top and then pull just a little bit and that's going to allow for a little bit of a longer can which is fun it's, it's kind of a cool shape uh, you can do that or you can you can keep it squat totally up to you guys So I'm going to heat this up and blow just a little bit. And then this is going to allow me to uh, create the hole to, to drop the down stem. So starting with one blade of the jacks, because the hole is kind of small, you could also use a reamer for this. Uh, feel, feel free to modify this in any way that, that works for you. So once you have the, uh, the hole the right size, you can uh, grab your nine millimeter rod and just make sure that it's the right size. Put it down and then I'm measuring it with my thumb. So you see I have my thumb in one place and I'm keeping my thumb there. And now I'm gonna, I know the approximate measurement of the down stem that I want. And then I can snap that off the tube and flare, flare one side and just fire polish the other. So fire polish one to make sure that it's uh, 
is not going to be sharp in the inside and then the second one just flare a little bit just a tiny bit so that it, it locks in with the with the top of the can when we're putting it in all right flaring is one of the funnest things for me i really enjoy seeing the glass open up i always have all right so drop this in carefully you don't want the lip to hit <coughs> So put in, insert that really carefully. All right, and now we are going to grab our mini torch and use the tip of the mini torch just to push in that lip of the down stem. And there's definitely, you could use graphite or other things for this. Obviously you wanna modify this for whatever works for you. Uh, I like to use the mini torch because it's convenient right there in my hand. Some people have a little poker on top of their mini torch, which is a cool, cool thing as well. All right, so I'm just kind of sweeping it and, and pushing it a little bit with the flame, making sure it's nice and melted in. And then I'll be able to uh, adjust the size of the hole if I need to, and uh, I'll be able to push my downstem. So for this one, because I flattened it ahead of time, uh, I don't need to be careful f for the length of the downstem. I'm only going to be pushing it in one direction versus the bubbler where we're pushing that in two directions after the, the drop of the downstem. That's one of the advantages of creating the bottom now as opposed to creating the bottom after you attach the stem. So I have the downstem in there and it looks like I got a crack. So. I'm gonna keep this in so I can show you guys how to repair this crack. It's a pretty mean crack. You can see it goes all the way down. And that happened because there was probably one little point on top of the down stem that didn't, didn't connect. And when I went back in there to reheat it, there, there was a big crack. So I'm using a bushy flame that's higher in propane to really heat up the glass slowly. And you can, you can also do this with a Bunsen burner and you can adjust your flame so that it's a little hotter or colder. This is this is a little bit on the hot side right now, but I'm, I'm trying to repair something at the same time. So now I'm gonna go in with my mini torch and slowly kind of brush against the crack and hopefully I'll be able to get it out. You can see it's already disappearing. Repairing a crack is really important skill to have. And so the best thing that I can recommend for repairing a crack is uh, having a Bunsen burner on and, and having your piece in the Bunsen often. So you can see that the crack is, is looking pretty good at this point. And I really wanted to leave that in there for, for you guys to see what to do about a crack. One of the things about glass blowing is that you really have to make each step right before you move on. I wanted to fix the crack before I push the bowl and I needed to make that step correct before I could move on. And so now I'm going to uh, move on to the next step, which is creating the bridge the same way that we did last time and then creating the bridge for the down stem here. You can do this in one of two ways. You can either attach that uh, three millimeter, or two millimeter, whatever you're using to your blow tube, to the lip of your blow tube or you can do it like I'm doing it here, where you fold it back and attach a rubber band. Both of them are a little bit tricky and both of them have their advantages. You can modify this technique in any way you want so that uh, it'll work for you and the way that your body works. All right, so now I have that all bridged up. I'm gonna push this in and I really wanna do this slowly in a couple of different movements. If I push too hard at once, uh, I may distort the bowl or uh, it may, may come down off center. You can see here, you're looking at that. You can see there's a slight scar, like a tiny scar uh, uh, of the crack that was there before, but I'll actually be able to work that out a little bit more uh, coming up if it, if it persists. All right, so I'm pushing this bowl down. You can see that I got a nice even shape. Everything is... Uh, clean on all the walls <clears throat> and there we go go in there with the mini torch and remove any of the lines
anything like that that's in there from the marks of the graphite. And I really like the mini torch, but the GTT yellow jacket works well too. Just pushing it in with my bull push and you can see I'm holding it over the Bunsen now. This is going to help repair that crack too if I hold over the Bunsen for a little while. There's a few different types of Bunsens that you can get and uh, there's a video that I have uh, kind of going over the use of a Bunsen. So yeah, you should check that out. Bunsens are super critical, especially as you're making more and more complex pieces. So I have the can finished, shaped, and in the kiln. And now we're going to work on the stem. The stem is basically like a spoon pipe. We're going to be elongating it in the center, but this time a little bit further, a little bit more narrow. And then we're going to be, you know, making an S curve, kind of, you know, similar to how we made it for the, uh, the Sherlock. So we're using all of these steps that we've been learning uh, all throughout Pipe Making One to build and to use these different things so that we have all these different skills that we can put together to make something. So here you go, we've pulled that out. It's a little bit thinner than a normal spoon. I just got the heat really nice and even and pulled out. The heat was a little bit war uh, hotter in the back. Uh, you can see that because of the way that it tapered and uh, that's important for me and how I want this piece shaped. So here I go, I'm gonna heat up the Maria, the mouthpiece, and push together. And that's gonna create a little bit thicker of an area. There we go. So now I have that uh, thickness where I want it. I'm gonna create the area where I'm gonna detach the piece from the blow tube. So depending on how much I want to take off, I can either uh, make that mark on the blow tube or if I want to remove a little bit of that glass, I can pull down that Maria on the back side and then make the mark there. So you can see I pulled it just a little bit and now I'm going to push it in with my V-blade and make the mark. All right. So I'm going to go into my V-blade tool and make that line that's going to help me separate the glass finished piece from the blow tube when everything's all done uh, i'll just be able to cool that and chill that and then i'll create a really nice and clean separation for my piece all right so i basically have the stem close to what i want you can put in a maria if you want to or you can adjust anything you can uh, straighten out anything you want here make sure it's all set up for you good the way that you want before you attach it it's way easier to finish each section to what you want it to be before you attach it as opposed to trying to shape something already attached and that's why we're building individual components that are finished and then attaching them together so really once you attach them it's good to go. You don't need to attach something and go in and reshape it. That would be much too complex. All right, so now I'm gonna remove some excess glass. There was a little bit too much glass for me uh, on the end there. There we go, we'll pull this off. Just blow that out a little bit and make a round bottom. And you can shape this too in different ways. You can flatten this put a donut in it you know all kinds of fun stuff you could do so make sure you stay creative and you know try to make one of these the same way that I do and then you know go ahead and be creative all right so I'm going to open up this hole blow that out there we go and we're really going to stretch this out because it's going to be a bigger connection than the the regular bubbler so we're going to do like more of a u-bend here the way that we did the sherlock so that's why it's important to to do that sherlock first so that you have all the skills necessary to make this stand up bubbler all right i'm put, opening that up with my graphite reamer i really love that tool from taglia tools all right here we go heating up the bubbler now the can 
And again, I'm going to try to blow a big hole so that it connects uh, to the proper size that the stem is. <clears throat> so I'm going to heat that up and blow, plug it with my graphite reamer or my uh, bowl push and blow that out. And then I'll open it a little bit more with the reamer and you have now I have two really big holes. And I'll heat them up and connect them. Heat them up, connect, push a little bit, then pull. And I'm going to straighten this up. Look at this from different angles. Make sure that everything looks correct. And now I'm going to uh, just put a little bit more heat into there so I can move it around a little bit. And then I'll be able to attach a bridge and really get in there. All right, so pull this off. And now I'm going to attach my bridge. You can you can take off either one that you want, to be honest. You know, you could take off the one on the mouthpiece or you could take the one off the bottom. Some people prefer to work uh, off the mouthpiece, which creates the piece being off center. Uh, it, and some people like to work off off the bottom of the, the can, which keeps the can part of it on center, but any uh, extremities off center. So in this case, the can weighed a lot more than the stem. So I wanted to put the heaviest part on center. So now I'm going to connect these, heat that up, pull off any excess glass, and then bend that down to connect to the blow tube. Push that right in there. And now I will attach this with my, my mini torch. So I'm going to heat it up and really don't want to get that blow tube very hot because it could um, move and I could lose the piece. So I really only want to heat up a small section of the clear blow tube. As I'm heating it up, it's melting into each other and flowing and that's all I need. And then I can go into the piece and really heat up that section. You could use uh, an annealing flame here, especially as you're making more complex pieces with color. You can see that in the the next couple courses uh, that we're going to be doing with with color and then shaping with color. So now I'm going to heat this up and push that together a little bit, blow it out, expand it, just see everything flow, see, see it all fluid. All right. Heat that up, then blow it out. And I'm just like letting everything melt together really smoothly and creating a really nice flow of the glass from one piece to the other. And then it becomes one piece. And all of the molecules are flowing from one side to the other. Um, making it nice and even is really important when you're building pieces that have structural components and you're making attachments, you want to make sure that everything is super smooth and has a nice flow and you can run your fingers over it and it will feel very smooth. All right, blowing a little bit, expanding. All right. So now we're just checking it out, make sure everything looks good. And I'm gonna go in and smooth this out a little bit more. So one side appeared to be a little bit too in, so I'll blow a little bit, I'll plug the hole and blow just a little bit, try to even out those walls. Once I feel like everything is connected really good, I will remove my uh, bridge. So we're removing the bridge by first taking off the lower part and I'm not hitting the piece at all with the flame, just the, just the bridge. If I hit the piece, it would crack it at this point. So you want to be very careful to not heat the piece uh, on the can right now before putting it in the kiln. So I'm removing, removing the, the other part of the bridge and now this will allow me to 
to bend the mouthpiece. So this is gonna be similar to how we bent the, the Sherlock. We're gonna heat it up with a very soft, bushy flame. And we're just gonna kinda of get it hot really slowly so that we have a lot of control. So I'm heating it up and I'm gonna be bending this back so that it has a nice shape for the mouth. Do it really smooth and slow. And you can, you can move this around a little bit if you wanna heat up a little bit more of a section. You can do it, you just have to be very careful with it. All right, so now I'm just heating up the top a little bit more because I want that to be kicked back towards me a little bit more. It's important that if you're trying to make very smooth, seamless bends that you do them in very little stages. As you can see that I have that nice curve on the mouthpiece because I was doing it in very small stages. All right, now I'm going to heat up the end of this Make sure that's nice and even with that Bunsen. So I'm going back in there with the Bunsen, make sure everything is nice and warm. And now I'm gonna go in and pop a hole right on the bottom because we're gonna do something kind of cool. We're gonna do a snorkel carb. So this is like an old school technique and basically solves the problem of um, the stale smoke that remains in the piece if the carb is above the water level. So by putting the carb below the water level, it will evacuate all of the smoke and not leave any excess smoke in the piece. And that's why people like the snorkel carb. So the way that that will work is because we're going to build a tube like a snorkel and the water level will not get to the top of the tube, but the intake water will be under the, the intake air to clean out the, the pipe will come in under the water. It's a cool tech. All right, so pop the hole, attach your 12 millimeter tube, and you know, you can make this out of color and make any size tube you want, but uh, in this case, we're doing all clear so that uh, you can learn the techniques and then you can practice those uh, with color once you learn how to do this in clear. All right, so now I'm just going into the bottom of the snorkel carb, I'm gonna heat that up a little bit and bend it into the piece to kind of uh, flow with the piece and its shape. All right, pushing that into the piece. And then well, we can do a little bridge here. And if you do a bridge, it'll help the stability of the snorkel carb and also bridge it up so that, so that I can melt in the bottom of the piece, you know, right where that snorkel carb connects to the can and then make that really nice and smooth. So I'll use a like two or three millimeter rod here and just stick that right in between the two. And sometimes I go from both sides depending on, on what kind of thing I'm doing. But like here, see I'm going to both sides and that's gonna make it nice and even all the way through for when I melt that in. And I have my bridge. And once I have the bridge, uh, I can go into the bottom and really melt that, melt that bottom of the snorkel carb together. All right, cool. So now I have the top of the bridge melted in and this is a little bit um, timing wise. I, I would suggest that you might wanna leave your Bunsen on and, and keep it kind of flowing in and out of the Bunsen during this these late stages of construction. And especially after you attach that uh, bridge on the top, going back into the bottom where you originally attached the seal is tricky. So you, I would recommend that you heat that up a little bit unless you're able to do that top bridge very fast. All right. So now we have that all melted in. I'll go into the bottom, fix that last little components of where the seals connect from uh, the snorkel carb. I can't wait to see what you guys make with this. Uh, why don't you put it on Instagram and uh, tag at Revere Glass or hashtag at Revere Glass or tag tag me for sure and i'll be able to check it out and if you have any questions while you're working on this feel free to use the chat or send a message to us and uh, we'll be able to help you through it all right cool making that connection and now i'm going to take off the top of the snorkel carb and i'm going to blow that out just even it out so I'm going to heat this up 
blow a little bit. That's going to make a nice round bottom. It's off center, so it's a little bit more difficult to do, but it's fun and it's, it's definitely good practice. All right, blow just a little bit more to make that nice and even. Here we go. Pop that. And now we have the carb facing you. So it's kind of a something to think about when you're making the carb is where that hole is facing and how that will work in your hand. So in this way, the carb is facing you so that your thumb will be holding it. It'll be a nice placement for your left thumb. All right, going back in with the Bunsen, you can see I have the Bunsen on and I have my other, my bench burner, my GTT on uh, a bushy flame as well. And that's going to allow me to heat up the whole thing again, make sure that nothing's going to crack and then go back into the mouthpiece and remove the last little bit, which is, um, which is the mouthpiece. There we go. Take that off and pop it there. So now heat up the, uh, heat up the mouthpiece, go in with the reamer and open that up. Use the paddle. Flatten it out. So now we have everything connected. I'm going to hold this with my pad. This is another way to remove a piece. And you take off the blow tube. And so this is a Kevlar pad. And this is a technique that will become really important as we're doing later stage construction is being able to hold the piece uh, in your hand with a Kevlar pad while you take it out. Some pieces aren't going to be able to be taken off by holding them with the diamond shears and scoring them and this piece because of the size and because it's off center i wanted to show you guys another way to take this off all right so i'm going to heat this up and let that smooth out and get get nice and even i'll put that on the marver and because this was already basically flat i just have to heat up the center there's a little bit better view for you guys just put this down on the marver, make sure that everything fits. And now I'll do like a quick review for you guys so you can see what's going on. So first thing I'm going to do is blow out a bu bubble on the bottom. Then I'm going to flatten that bubble. Now I'm going to attach the blow tube to the bottom. Just make sure that's a nice seal because this is going to be holding up the piece. After I attach the blow tube to the bottom, I'm going to detach the other one from the top and then blow out a bubble. That will be the top of the can. After that, I'm gonna open up the hole for the downstem. I'm gonna measure the downstem, keep my thumb in that point, and then I'll cut off the downstem and flare one side and fire polish the other. I'll drop that into the can very softly. You wanna be gentle with that step. Then I'm gonna go around the edge of the downstem, make sure that's nice and sealed. Don't forget your bridge. That'll be helpful for when you want to push the downstem. So I'm going to push the downstem. All right. Push that downstem in, make sure that that bowl is fully pushed. And after that, then we're going to shape the stem. So this is basically like a spoon. We're going to stretch this out. The first step is stretching out the middle. The next step, we're going to make a Maria and create a little end piece for it to be broken off of. After that, we're going to remove any excess glass we don't want from the stem to make sure that everything is the good size. All right, next step you're going to want to do is pop out the hole of the, the down stem. Make sure that's a nice big hole because we're going to be attaching that to the other side of the can, which should also have a big hole. Then we're going to blow up the can a little bit and make sure that hole is really nice and big. There we go. Once that's blown out, we're going to connect the two together. We're going to push and pull just a little bit. Get that nice and straight. You want to look at that from all sides. Make sure it's uh, really nice and even. After that, once it's even and in place, we're going to attach our bridge. Make sure that's structurally sound and melted in everywhere. <clears throat> All right, 
After that, we're going to blow out the, the seal from the down stem uh, from this from the mouthpiece to the can. Make sure that's nice and even. We're going to have a little U bend on the bottom. Make sure everything looks good. Then we're going to remove the bridge. And after we remove the bridge, we're going to shape the the stem and the mouthpiece. Make sure that has a nice, uh, nice even, even curve. Using a soft bushy flame and the tweezers to manipulate that. After that, we're going to add the uh, snorkel carb, uh, the cool carb that allows uh, the clean air to replace all of the stale smoke in the piece. We're going to attach a 12 millimeter tube. There we go. And now we're going to bend that tube in using a soft flame, similar to how we bent the bat, the, the, the mouthpiece. All right, here goes each one of the halves of the, the bridge, two millimeters. I like this technique. Then you're going to go in with your mini torch and even that out. Once that's all connected, you want to heat up the base of the snorkel carb. Then you want to heat up the top of the snorkel carb and blow that out for where your finger is going to be. After that, we're going to clean that hole up a little bit and open it just a little bit more with the reamer. After that, we're going to detach the excess part of the stem where the blow tube was connected to the mouthpiece. And now we're going to open that up with the reamer, make sure that everything is nice and even. Now we're going to remove the blow tube while we hold the piece in our hand with the, graph with the Kevlar pad. So I'm going to put that on the marver and make sure that that's nice and even. You can see the piece here and all the lines and the evenness um, of the wall thickness. Please make sure to check out the other pipe making courses and tag us on Instagram so that we can see your work. I really appreciate you guys signing up and uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Thanks a lot, you guys.